Hey there, amplifiers. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Growth Amplifiers, your place to learn insights, knowledge, tips, and action steps. Amplified actions that you can take to continually improve, sharpen the saw, and amplify your business. My name is Kenny Harper, and I'm excited to be talking with you today because far too often people get so caught up in going after new business that they forget to focus on their existing business. And what I see a lot is people have clients that they're helping partially. And there's a lot of opportunity that they could be helping them so much more if they have the tools and the knowledge to get the job done. And our guest today is really an expert when it comes to empowering other advisors other B2B professionals to make sure that they have clarity on their cash flow, have clarity on what they can do to improve the value in their business, and overall make sure that things run more successfully. He's the future proofer of companies. So I'd like to welcome to Growth Amplifiers the founder and CEO of Cash Is Clear, David Safir. David, glad to have you here today. It is great to be here, Kenny. I, I'm really looking forward to this and having a great discussion today. Well, you know, cool thing is we're both on a similar mission to help people amplify their business. It's just we play different instruments. And when you find other people who play instruments that you can harmonize with, it's always great to connect and synergize. So, David, you've got this great company. You're helping out you know, accountants, bookkeepers, and even other business owners improve uh, the value in their, in their companies, get more awareness of the cash flow and the cash that they could have in their business. Can you give us a backstory of how you got to be where you're at today? What brought you to this knowledge, expertise, and this mission to help others? I'll give you a 30-second overview. I am a businessman. I, that's what I always wanted to do, and I've been in operations. I've been in IT. I've been in marketing. And I ended up as a general manager at a couple of publicly held companies where I was responsible for the P&L, the profit and loss. Never worried about cash flow at these big companies. And then I went to help small companies as an advisor. And I realized that no matter what they were asking me about, it all came down to generating cash flow. And they were always, every single one of them, had an issue that revolved around cash flow. They didn't call it that. They called it, I can't make payroll. They called it, we need to close contracts. They called it, um, we're not getting any traction with our marketing. And I decided I wanted to specialize in cash flow because there's a need in the marketplace to go well beyond the articles that are written, seven things, five things, 10 things to improve your cash flow to the hundreds literally hundreds of strategies available to uh, even a small business person to improve their cash flow. And fundamentally, I want to reduce business failures in the United States and hopefully around the world. That is a great mission because business, running a business, making sure that it can stay in existence is a challenge. A lot of businesses fail. A majority of them fail, partially for different reasons. But sometimes the good old cash flow is that culprit. And, and probably more often than not, it creates a lot of the other problems because it leads to stress. It leads to fear. It leads to rash decisions. If you don't have things flowing smooth, you're, you're going to panic. You're going to make rash decisions. It's not going to be good. So Let's let's talk about you help maybe the the average accountant or, or bookkeeper or somebody who's maybe already doing some services right now. You help them get a better understanding of how they can elevate, raise their game, and provide more value. Can you tell us about that mission and, and what that looks like? I'd be glad to. So uh, most accountants or advanced, and now I'm talking about advanced bookkeepers, mm -hmm. people, there's a difference between basic bookkeeping being in advance. But those folks who do it offer either um, a bookkeeping service or they do taxes or they'll do more advanced accounting. But what school does not teach them is how to look forward instead of backward. Their function is to record the past accurately so you can see where you've been. When you're trying to 
improve a business, you're trying to look forward. So that's the first part in my five part model of cash flow optimization is to change the mindset. I help them start looking forward and understanding what it takes to actually predict and manage and maximize cash flow. I really like that because like you said, there's there's a lot of people, hey, we're gonna report, we're gonna get things orderly, we're gonna we're gonna get things bundled in such a way where it's it's being accurate, which mm-hmm. has its value, right? But if you really want to cultivate transformation, if you want to provide maximum impact, if you really want to uh, cultivate the best possible outcome, you got to be looking ahead so you can take new actions to achieve new results. It's it's the name of the game, and I know that you've got a lot of resources on your website, cashisclear.com, and we're going to be promoting the guide that you've got. Definitely want to check this guide out because it has helpful insights that you can put into action and immediately start seeing some results. If you could take a moment to help someone wrap their mind around, yes, that's nice, but how do I go from what I'm doing now to being able to do that? Because I know there's a lot of people get stuck in, I'm afraid to make change. What if, how do I integrate change? How do I get started with that? That's a really insightful question. The people who say, David, show me how to do this. There's two things going on. Number one, they all want to help their clients. The money is a secondary issue. Everybody wants to be paid, but for these folks, they see that they've got clients and they do not know how to help them. And so they say, okay, it looks like, and, and they're, they can see it's revolving around cash flow. And so they say, well, tell, tell me about your system. And when I tell them, we've already mentioned mindset, but I can show them how to do cash flow modeling. And then once you've got a model, you can very easily learn how to manage your the cash flow for a company, moving money in, uh, pushing money out, where the when the money's coming and going, and then talking to them and coaching them about how they can become a mentor to their clients. And then finally, how do you go about maximizing and so it's a five-part model, and they the fear comes down as they understand, ah, there is a process that I can follow that will reduce my risk it will, and, and give me the confidence to go work with my clients. I really like that. I'm, I'm a big fan. I say it all the time. All right, getting overwhelmed. Remember, we don't need to run full speed. That would probably break our necks. We need to crawl, walk, run. It's just take the first step. Let's get into action. Let's start building some momentum. And when you take the first step, you may not know where you're going yet, but you'll start seeing the path more clearly each step you take. So get over the procrastination, get over trying to overthink it, trying to have all the answers and just take a step forward. If this is something that you're interested in, I encourage you to Look into it. Take a first step. Learn more of how you can grow and provide more value because ultimately that's that's how you serve to the best level that you can is when you improve your knowledge and expertise so that you can show up better for others. David, it's, it's really cool that you've got a framework. I'm a big uh, fan of frameworks. Keeps it simple. It keeps the process manageable, like you said. You can train others and you can scale it. The other thing is I don't have the time for that I don't have the time to learn new things because I've got so much busy work to do. I can't learn new things. I can't implement new things. What? How do you help people get beyond that? Well, when we're talking about a business owner who wants help with their cash flow, I say, great, you shouldn't. You, we should be putting into place a 15-minute to half-hour review maximum of a cash flow dashboard. The person who's going to do the heavy lifting is your accountant or bookkeeper, or sometimes they have multiple people in the, in the finance group. Mm-hmm. Now, so that's a business owner. If it is a, an accountant or a bookkeeper saying, I don't have the time or bandwidth, well, then sometimes we have to make hard choices in life. Are we going to stay where we are or do we want to make a leap? And if we have to make a leap, that generally may, means exercising our 
are, are, are some muscles and it's a little bit painful, but I can tell you this, the people who work with me, that the, the, these accountants, these bookkeepers, we have two meetings a week. Most of them come to one meeting. It's a mastermind and they come with questions about their clients, about how do I implement this? They told me that they need to do this, but I don't agree. So what do I do about it? Now, sometimes I don't have all the answers. That's why it's a mastermind. How often we come up with a solution to a specific client need that they have, they come and report back the next week. It worked. I said what you said I should say. And the response was exactly as you described it. So the investment in time ends up producing immediate results. That, in addition, if you can find 15 minutes a day, half an hour a week to watch the coursework, read the coursework, do the exercises, it's available at your schedule, which makes it a lot easier to... You know, the, the thing I like to remind people, especially people that are like, I'm not exactly satisfied the way things are at right now. I'd like them to be better. I just don't have the time to improve the situation. Reminds me of the old story from uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The guy who's really trying to saw the tree down. He's working really hard. Another guy walks up to him and says, what are you trying to do? He says, I'm trying to saw this tree down. He's like, well, looks like your blade is dull. Maybe you should sharpen the saw. He says, ah, that's nice, but I don't have time because I'm trying to saw this tree down. If you're looking to change, you've got to make change. You've got to take new actions to achieve new results. And so if your mind is telling you, I don't have time to, to learn new things, to provide better service or better value, really question yourself on that because you got to make time for yourself. So it's like they, they say in the um, airplane, put your own mask on first, empower yourself so that you can provide more value. So if you could share one more thing, if you could share uh, maybe an experience of a story of an accountant that you've, you've helped go from, they were kind of showing up as the regular accountant. They had aspirations to do bigger and better things, but they didn't know how to do it. But then you, you shared your process with them and now they're playing on a different level. Yeah. I'd love to do that. So, um, one of the people who came into my program, he, he blew through the coursework incredibly quickly. Um, and it took him about a week. And most people take a couple of months, not because they need to, but they just don't want to digest quickly. Um, and sometimes people who do that, they'll get burnout, but not him. He immediately updated his website and started going after clients. And, and one of the things I tell them is, don't worry, you can do this today. How do I know you can do this today? You don't have to wait. Is because I'm backing you up and we meet once a week. Take a step. It's like you were talking about. Take a step. You get a client, you don't know what to do. Come back the next week and we'll talk about it as a group. And it has never failed that we're able to help them do a step at a time. So John, uh, he was able to do this and acquire now, he's been my most successful client to date, but he, within three months, generated $36,000 in monthly billings that are recurring billings Ooh. with multiple clients in multiple industries, because this is, this is not industry specific. Just nobody would say, David, I only know how to do accounting for one industry. Yeah, there might be some peculiarities, especially it's a very large company or, you know, publicly traded. That's a different thing. But once you know publicly traded accounting, it doesn't matter the industry. It's the same thing for cash flow and understanding the modeling. So that is my big success for our story, John. And to give you an idea, that is, boy, I've never figured out the ROI. It's not in the hundreds. It's probably a thousand percent ROI or or more the first year versus the investment he made into the program. And one thing I always like to remind people about investment when they're they're debating, mm -hmm, should I make an investment? Get the cost out of your mind. It's not a cost when you invest in something that's going to transform and elevate your productivity and elevate your impact because it that changes you from that day for the duration of doing business.
So think about not the cost of investing in something, the cost of not doing it. What does that look like if you're not improving your game, if you're not showing up, um, playing all out for those you serve, if you're not really helping people cultivate their best possible results, what is the cost of not empowering yourself to be able to serve at that level? It's much more costly than investing in yourself. So big fan of personal development. Speaking of personal development, putting you on the spot for our advisors um, call outs. Do you have any books that you've read recently that you've thought, hey, this is a really good book or a book that you like that you'd like to give a shout out to? Recommendation? Uh, that's a great uh, question. So um, uh, Rory Vaden wrote a very famous book. Um, I remember being in the airport, uh, you know, bookstores when I was traveling a lot called Take the Stairs. But in my mind, the better book, and I remember this one, it's not a great title, <laughs> is why it didn't do as well. It's called Proca Procrastinate on Purpose mm. by Rory Vaden. Now, he did a TED Talk called Multiply Your Time, which has been seen five or eight million dollars, five or eight million times. So pretend the book is called Multiply Your Time, but Procrastinate on Purpose helps you understand why you shouldn't rush into things and why you should be prepared and build systems and sacrifice. It's not much different than what we're talking about investing in yourself. Well, invest in your business, put systems into place, whether it's marketing, whether it's new skills, etc. cetera. And the benefits of for every hour you put in now, if you put a system in place, it will save you hours or tens of hours or hundreds of hours down the road. It's a great book. That's really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, while we're talking about productivity, do you have a productivity tip or a tool uh, that might pair with that book really nicely? So I have started using a piece of software called for when I'm in um, video meetings, it will record the meetings and provide a summary of those meetings, as well as do a transcription of who is talking and when. And it's proved very helpful to be able to go back and uh, I do less note taking and I'm able to focus more on the content uh, and concentrate on the conversation. That's really cool. AI is definitely making it easier. Uh, and I really do appreciate taking notes. I still will pen along a little bit myself. It helps me tuned in, but um, having some tools so that you can not get too overwhelmed with taking notes and actually be in the moment. Really powerful. Uh, last question for you on the advisor's picks. Is there a, a thought leader that you would like to give a shout out to? Maybe they could be a good candidate for a guest, maybe a colleague that you see is doing some really cool stuff. Any thought leaders that like you can give a shout out to? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, I'm, I'm going to go LinkedIn and um, I'm looking away from the camera because I'm going to go find this guy because there's a lot of LinkedIn gurus out there. Um, I know a bit about LinkedIn. I could call myself a guru from what I've seen on some of these guys. Um, but this guy really knows his stuff and he's out of Spain. Richard Van Der Blom. B L O M Richard V A N D E R B O B L O M. Um, have you ever heard of evidence based medicine? It's medicine that's based upon actual research and results. Yes, I have. he does results based LinkedIn. He does research. He studies literally thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of posts and tells you this will work now. Um, but it didn't work two months ago and is constantly helping to understand the ongoing uh, evolution of the LinkedIn algorithm, but it's in plain, simple language anybody can understand. Really helpful. I'm a fan of LinkedIn. And when you're using it to build relationships, if you got some people out there who are abusing LinkedIn, if you're jumping stages and trying to push your agenda on people, you're using it wrong, you might get the occasional result. But LinkedIn's supposed to be about connecting with people. So don't abuse it, people. 
you know, make it harder for everyone else to build real relationships. Like LinkedIn is a great tool if you use it correctly. So for those people who have learned about David and they're like, you know, I would like to get my cash clear. <laughs> you can go to cashisclear.com and where else could they go and what should they do that might be beneficial for those who are interested in learning more about improving their cash flow or helping others with the cash flow? Well, when you go to cashisclear.com, you can schedule a time to meet with me. If you're interested in that happened, I did a webinar last week. I'm meeting with two people uh, this week. Uh, yeah, two people in the next few days. And we're just going to talk. And I'm going to talk to them a little bit more about cash flow. You can also follow me on LinkedIn. I provide resources there. And through Cash is Clear Learning Systems, the company page, we do webinars. So there's a lot of free information. There's articles. I've got a uh, sort of anemic YouTube channel, but there's a lot in the pipeline. That's what we're building up a backlog. So we're going to be doing a lot on YouTube as well. So follow, follow me there. And then you've got a special link, the CIC 60. CIC 60. That is a, that, sorry, you mentioned it earlier. I should have said it. <laughs> CIC 60.com will get you to this 10 easy habits ebook. And literally, you could get started today, and anybody can implement these habits. I specifically stripped it down to you don't have to have technical skills. Um, it, it is for people to start improving their cash flow. And I, I suggest just check this out. Even if all you did was gain one idea to help you have more cash flow, that you could just build that habit, whether it's for yourself or you could pass it along to someone else you know and be an amplifier for them. Why not? This is and, all about sharing and learning and growing. And I would love to give a challenge to the bookkeepers or accountants out there that are listening and going, yeah, I know all about cash flow. Take a look. This is not your traditional methodologies. It is not about selling more. It's not about collecting faster. I, I won't give it away, but I think there's going to be a couple surprises in there. Check it out. Find out if you don't pick one thing out, reach out to David and say, hey. <laughs> yeah, let me know. I'll give you your money back. <laughs> yes. Really cool, David. Uh, for our tradition of ending, the, ending these interviews, we'd like to ask if you would share something that you've learned on your journey that would be helpful for others on theirs. It could be related to your line of work, to your expertise, or it could be completely just anything that you've learned in your life that might be helpful for others on their journey, that would be greatly appreciated. So it is tough. Business is hard for most people. We, we hear about these huge success stories and, it's, and people like, oh, they're blessed, right? They, everything they touch turns to gold. That's not the case for most people. If you are struggling right now, know two things. Number one, things will get better. But number two is the way they might get better is through a complete failure of your business. And I've seen it over and over again. The stress and the tension of a business that is struggling is not nearly as bad of once the business has shut down and people are moving on with their lives. So now I'm here to help people who are really struggling avoid moving on. But a couple of times I've had to say, I don't see a way out of this. I won't go, go into the details, but I've recommended they shut down. And one in particular was a friend. And I felt guilty. Years later, I apologized. I told him I felt guilty. He said, David, what are you talking about? My wife and I bless your name. Because once we finally made the decision, life got better. Bravo. It is not bad to fail. Failure is feedback. And I love the quote, maybe it's Winston Churchill. Maybe I'm quoting the wrong person. But success is being able to fail and fail again and come back, continually coming back with enthusiasm. So if you, if you know how to just get back up and get right back at it, failure is not a bad thing. It's feedback. Don't be afraid to fail. Embrace it. It teaches you. It makes you stronger. It makes you faster. David, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. I appreciate your knowledge and expertise and what you're doing in this world as an amplifier. Any final thoughts, David, before we say sayonara? Um, your thoughts made me think of Rocky Balboa talking to his son, where he explains to him, to paraphrase, it's not how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you stand back up 
and come out fighting. I love it. That was awesome. Great way. Hope you feel inspired and keep on amplifying. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.